for this final session, we wanted to give you the opportunity to actively participate by asking your question to two experts from Arcadia and Capella. And for this purpose, we are welcoming Juan Navas and Jean-Luc Guara, both from Thales. Uh, Juan is a system architect with more than 10 years of experience in performing and implementing system engineering practices. He currently leads the team that is supporting managers and architects to implement MDSC approaches on a personal project and to them to define their engineering schemes, objectives, and guidelines. Jean-Luc Voirin is Director Engineering and Modeling in Thales Defense Mission System Business Unit and Technical Director. He has been an architect of real-time and near-real-time computing and mission system on civil and, mis oh, sorry, sorry, and mission aircraft and fighters. He is a principal author of the Arcadia method and an active contributor to the definition of methods and tools. He is involved in coaching activities across all Thales business units, in particular on flagships and critical projects. So welcome Jean-Luc, uh, nearly welcome Juan, since we have some connection issues. I hope you will be able to rejoin really us while I'm, I'm finishing to introduce this session. So we already have a set of questions in the thread. Uh, however, before we really begin, uh, I just would like to remind you that it's much more easier for me to find your question if uh, it's entered using the ask a question button as a lower part of your screen and moreover i will pick the ones that obtain the highest number of votes so if you want a question to be asked uh, please go vote for it and one last thing i also have the ability to invite some of you on the screen so that you can ask your question directly um, if you're willing to uh, tighten your tie in your room and above all Please indicate you're interested for that as a complement to your to your question. Uh, actually, we never used this option, so it's without any guarantee. But we can give a try and see what's happened. We already have lost one of our speakers, so it can be worse. So, thanks, Jean-Luc, to be with us, and I will have a look at the question we have. Uh, first question, how do you manage configuration control and version control? Well, um, I, I think one should be much better uh, to this. Uh, as you know, uh, there is no uh, embedded uh, version or configuration management features in the Capella, so usually you will use external tools. So, uh, uh, maybe you can add it anyway. Uh, one is here. Can you hear and us? I'm, I'm here. I don't know if you can hear just, me. It's just in time to save to save <laughs> it. Sorry, okay, the back. question was, how do you manage configuration control and version control? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, well, version control is mostly, I, I can talk mostly about the version control, um, because configuration control is, is I mean, a topic that is uh, wider than that. But uh, we, in, in our company, we use, uh, we use Git as a version control tool, is the well-known version control tool, I mean, used for many software projects. And there is an adapter with, uh, I mean, between Capella and Git, so, I mean, is between team for Capella and uh, and Git, uh, so we can uh, baseline uh, versions of our model uh, using classic commands integrated into the uh, into the uh, user interface. Uh, so I mean, this is the technical part. The methodological part is uh, how often do you create baselines. Um, what is the content of the baselines? How do you document the baselines? This is up to the uh, to the projects to uh, to define that, um, and it really depends on the pace of the engineering uh, workflow. Uh, so, for instance, when we are in a kind of a rather agile or agility approach, uh, we do a baseline most often than in other in other approaches. Uh, it really depends also on the on the um, 
uh, on the request from the client, for instance, to have uh, uh, baseline versions that they can uh, they can look at. So uh, it's really dependent on, on on the project. But mostly, the I mean, the, the building block, the technological building block is, is Git, uh, coupled with uh, with Capella, with Team for Capella. Thanks, Juan. Uh, next question from Joseph Flam. Uh, when developing models, it's an advantage to work from a common source of truth, meaning the same model. Uh, so how do you cope with cases when you have to collaborate with stakeholders not using common tools and... Uh, yes, the question is quite long, so this part would be, would be a good start. Yes, we got it. So, uh, uh, I will start with Juan, please elaborate. Uh, can you hear me better that way or not? Um, okay. Well, it's not ideal. We have a lot of echo, but we'll do, we'll do with. Sorry. So, uh, well, first, you have to know that the Arcadia language that Capella supports is not built from scratch. So, of course, it has many features in common with other uh, traditional uh, uh, languages used for uh, 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 systems engineering modeling, such as UML or CSML on one side, AADL to some extent, and also architecture frameworks such as uh, NAF or DODAF. So, this is why uh, up to now we had many, uh, many uh, collaborations with external stakeholders, be they customers, partners, or subcontractors. And in, in no cases, we had uh, an impossibility of collaborating on these models. That's the first point. Collaborating might be either by um, translating their models into uh, Capella or vice versa, but this is not so frequent. In most cases, it was about sharing the same semantics, the same kind of and uh, system engineering related concepts and the way to uh, make to keep them in traceability uh, kind of uses so as to justify one customer uh, element for example by corresponding uh, elements in our own models and so on. so in terms of semantics we we have the good experience experience that most concepts can be easily shared that's the first point. The second point is that uh, uh, from the tooling perspective, most cases are rather in terms of traceability and justification rather than uh, in terms of uh, uh, importing or exporting a model from or to Capella. But we know how to do that as well if needed. Juan, do you want to add something? Yeah, no, no, it's, um, it's, it's okay. I mean, the, the important thing for me is to make a clear distinction between uh, what means, uh, I would say, interoperability, interoperability of, uh, of semantics, of terms, of concepts, of tools, of data, of information. I mean, it's very important to define what level of interoperability do we want uh, in a given context, and in terms of the uh, the, I will, the 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 level of interoperability, there are a lot of uh, solutions, as Jean-Luc just said. Uh, there is the, uh, I mean, the low low tool uh, interoperability based on on okay, we get agreement on the concepts uh, that we are using at, at different sites of, um, between different stakeholders, and the very strong interoperability, which is uh, uh, the tool uh op based operability for which i mean capella it's uh, it's an open source and there are a lot of people that are able to uh i mean it's open so you can develop a lot of interoperability between uh, between capella and other tools but but also there are other um tool providers that are able to uh, to develop this uh, this kind of interoperability bridge okay thanks and i see that joseph is connected and active in the chat. So, Joseph, if you're interested, uh, I can invite you to complete your question or ask for precision. Just, just say it in the chat if you're interested. Instead, I will, I will pass to the next question. Uh, okay, so I will, I will invite you. Okay. So we can connect. So, too bad. 
Uh, okay, next question. Uh, is there any connection with formal methods from Capella? In order to guarantee the consistency and the correction of a system architecture. Well, the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> the question is, is, could we do so? And would it be useful? Um, first, if we wanted to connect to a formal method, this would mean adding much more formalization and formal language and language concepts inside the Arcadia and Capella language. This would probably not only result in uh, more constraints in modeling as compared to today, and less flexibility in representing concepts, but also uh, in adding uh, a significant amount of complementary modeling so as to reach the understandability for formal analysis. Up to now, we have never uh, reached a level of detail and of formalization of our models that would make that beneficial. So no doubt that part of the model could be injected in a formal uh, language to support, for example, and we have some kinds of uh, uh, attempts today, but usually not to verify the model content, but rather to initialize a, more, a much more detailed design phase that would be initialized by means of the model. No, you're welcome. Yes, so, uh, to complete um, a, a little bit the, the, the answer of uh, Jean-Luc, I don't know what, what industrial field uh, the person that asked the question uh, works in, um, but in, in our industrial fields, uh, most of the time, uh, we, I mean, if we, if we talk about formal methods, it's because we are in a safety-critical system. Uh, and, um, and for safety critical systems, there are different safety levels to make it short. Uh, and for uh, most of the, of the components of the system or the, I mean, the functions of the system, uh, I would say semi-formal methods uh, are, are enough uh, regarding uh, regulations and, um, and, I mean, requirements from the regulatory bodies. Uh, so, I mean, Capella obviously is a semi-formal method in the way that is, I mean, the language is formalized. Um, and, and the formal methods are most of the time applied in, in very specific and um, yeah, very specific components or parts of the of the solution. So that's why uh, the need of applying formal methods at the system level, at the architectural design uh, engineering task of the of the whole system has not really emerged in in our, I mean in in the projects that we that we work with. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question is from Michele Santeramo. Uh, which advice could you give to someone wanting to develop a system starting from system level to the component level step by step? I, I can I pro can I provide a very short answer <laughs> because uh, the, well, we, have time. Answer, <laughs> we have the time very short the very short answer is uh, you can buy the the book by Jean Luc and and follow the method. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be quick, this is not even the method. The idea is that although uh, Arcadia and Capella have been tuned so as to be usable not only for top-down approach but also for bottom-up reusable and so on uh, the, the, the traditional way of working from uh, system need up to governance definition is fully part of the method so uh, if you follow the method you should have uh, most answers to your questions <laughs> okay but but more, yeah. more seriously speaking uh there are a lot of resources um about uh check out the uh the capella uh, youtube channel and there are a lot of resources so you can, yes. you can start by by there yeah andrew andrew it's i agree with andrew who said you can compress the three day trainings into one center <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, the next one, uh, uh, you you cannot choose a simple sentence to answer this one. How do you foster the cultural change required to move towards a, a model approach? Yeah, 
this is a very a very good um and we a very good question and we can we could talk the whole day about um uh, the the first day of uh, the the first uh, on monday the first day um i i presented some elements regarding this question uh i talked about two principles that we have applied into uh, into driving this cultural change. Uh, the first one was uh, reconcile with the past, take into account the existing practices in your uh, in your engineering of your engineering population. Uh, so uh, in our case, uh, it was one one example was the use of requirements uh, of actual requirements, and uh, I mean taking into account that requirements has been the backbone for decades. Uh, so we we really to account this this fact and, and rather than saying okay models will replace requirements uh we we adapted uh the i mean the the, the implementation of model based systems engineering to make textual requirements and model requirements live together and the second principle was embrace the future uh which was illustrated by the by the fact that we we need to day to to develop systems so we we identify the practices that could be uh, put in place to uh, to use models in uh, I mean with with agility. Uh, but these these are only two examples that have been useful in our company. There are other ones, uh, and um, and there are only I mean if you are if you really want to go deeper into into what are the uh, what are the, the the factors that have uh, uh, helped. Uh, deployment of uh, model-based systems engineering in, in Thales. Uh, there is a very good paper that was published some, some years ago uh, about this topic. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure the paper is uh, is available in the uh, in the Capella website, in the resources page. Uh, so this, uh, I mean, there are other factors, for instance, the fact to, uh, uh, that uh, people in the uh, engineering teams will need to be empowered, uh, the fact of having kind of a model-based systems engineering champions in uh, in the business units, etc. So I really recommend to 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 check out this uh, this paper that is available for you. Okay, thanks, Juan. Um, are there any studies trying to evaluate the KPI associated to Arcadia and Capella, mainly in terms of productivity? Well, it's difficult to, to see exactly what the KPI word means here. If we consider that it's the way to uh, estimate the progress of engineering, uh, using models, uh, the practices in Thales are mainly around considering capabilities, functional chains, and scenarios as a way to mainly uh, uh, check uh, and, and master progress uh, because they are present at need and solution level. So they are a good way of, of appreciating the, the progress of each of these different uh, steps. And second, because they have the good property that they are used in uh, architecture definition, in IVV uh, strategy definition and IVV test campaigns definition, and in agility as well, uh, when we work with software teams especially. So if we consider KPIs for en uh, engineering progress based on model uh, elements, these are prob probably the most important ones uh, as used in the uh, uh, Considering the uh, progress of modeling, no matter the content of the model, then yes, we have many, many ones, but the difficulty is to extract figures that can give an oracle of whether the modeling work is good or not. We have no definite criteria today for so. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, next question from Mark Dasko. How easy is Arcadia and Capella to be used in an agile way? Does it have a way to show any report? Uh, sorry. Does it have a way to show any report to yeah. the impact of a change? yeah um yeah well, well regarding this question i really 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 recommend uh to to i mean 
you can you can write me and I can share the, the paper that we presented at the Incosi Symposium this year, uh, which was precisely about uh, about uh, how to use uh, models in in an agile way. Um, uh, having said that, uh, I, I think the key element, the uh, the key concept are capabilities and functional chains that describe these capabilities. Uh, in in our projects, we we use it. and the the one of the advantage of the of the functional chains is that, that we are able uh, to to make a, um our, um I mean a trustability link that be exploited later between the functional chains and uh, so for instance when you when you talk about the change in the middle of the design. Well, changes uh, most often happen when there is a finding, when there is something that that doesn't work like uh, like is expected. So this is the uh, the people that are testing, either the engineering team or the I mean the design team or the uh, integration and verification validation teams uh, that are um, performing tests on the on the design, on this in particular on the software design, uh, and they can w once they have this this finding, they can uh, map. Uh, to uh, they can they can go back I would say to the functional chain and uh, identify where is the finding and understand the source uh, of this uh, finding and modify if necessary the uh, the architecture uh, of the system. So this is only just one done and of course as trustability links are well maintained between the between the test cases and the and the functional chains this report i mean very i mean it's not completely automatic but this but can be done very quickly yes and i i just would like to add we also had a, a webinar on this topic and the the video is also available on uh, the youtube capital channel um Okay. Oh, well, I'm not sure this this question is easy. Uh, so, can we use an SQL database for capturing cap the capital model? Uh, well, <laughs> I give you the question. Don't as is. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, um, if you if you. Uh, uh, to, um, I mean, to later uh, explore the the elements of the of the. Don't hesitate to uh, to publish this tool uh, into the labs for Capella. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can. I mean, there's there is a Capella which is available. Uh, what, and using this API, you can do a lot of things that you could do uh, with uh, with a database. Thanks, Juan. Uh, next question: um, Does Capella has a uh, capability to manage permissions between team members? Uh, for example, view or edit. Uh, is this the first question? Yes, because I see there are two questions on that. Yeah, but I start with the first part. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, short answer is yes, uh, and I think. Simone has uh, talked about uh, things for Capella, so yeah, this is part of the uh, part of the answer. Uh, there, there is the capability to define permissions, uh, access permission, access um, control uh, on, on Capella models using the team for Capella version of Capella. Um, okay, this is something maybe we we would have to discuss in the future. Uh, we have we have way to to define permission, but well, it's not always convenient to use. So probably we we have to to seek about something uh, more usable. But well, yeah, well, I mean, it really depends on the on the uh, granularity of this uh, access control, which can yes. be at some moments can be enough, and other people could consider that is not enough. In our cases, in our company, we we consider that uh, act control. I mean, uh, current granularity of access control is is enough for us. Okay, and now the second part of the question: If an upper model change, uh, does Capella has the ability to show uh, 
well, subset sign or any other way uh, that thing, thing has changed. Um, I think probably the system to subsystem add-on is able to. Yeah, but in, in general, the general in general the transitions between uh, between the perspectives uh, in Capella allow you to uh, to identify the change if there are, have been significant changes on on model elements that I mean impact the realization links between the perspectives uh, in Capella. And there is always the the semantic browser that you can use to navigate uh, in the model and identify what are the elements that could be impacted by a change. Because the, the difficulty with uh, with impact change is I mean change um, I mean change analysis of change uh, is that uh, we can identify the the candidates for uh, for 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 an impact, but I mean to identify the the the, the elements that are effectively Touched by uh, by a change, uh, well, you will need to uh, you, you you need some uh, some brain from an engineer. I mean, thanks God, we we still have uh, a reason to exist. <laughs> okay. Um, any insights on the purity of the Kepler tool and continuous support of the ecosystem by Thales? I, I like the end of the sentence support of the ecosystem by Thales, but, well. <laughs> uh, I mean, the perennity of the tool, well, it's, it's, the, it's the Thales group tool. <laughs> uh, I can only talk about, uh, about Thales. <laughs> uh, the continuous support of the ecosystem by Thales, well, I mean, we, we are all, I mean, the, the people that are here, uh, in this room and, and people that are not connected, but they are your Capella users and the people who have been presenting, I mean, this year and the past years on, uh, on the Capella uh, days, they are all members of the community. So we, we I mean, we expect everybody to, to work together to, uh, to, to ensure the perennity and the evolutions of the, uh, of, of the tool uh, and uh, all the, the existing and, and future features, features of the tool. Yeah, and maybe to complete the answer, well, we 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 open source the tool, and we are seeing no first uh, tool improvement funded by external entities. So uh, Thales remains the main contributor, obviously. Uh, but well, we we have company who have decided to uh, to improve Capella and to maintain it in a way. So clearly, uh, the more user we will have uh, and the more Capella will be uh, uh, perenn in, in, in sense. Okay. Um, next question. Oh, uh, I think Jean-Luc, you, uh, uh, you have to leave us at, uh, at six, that's it? Yeah, okay, so we still have just two minutes. Uh, I will skip the first question because it's very complex. And I think we don't have time. I'm sorry for that. Uh, next one is, is there a connection with Sizerman? Well, uh, just to give an, an idea, we, we developed uh, a link, uh, a mechanized link between Capella and uh, UML uh, Sizerman tool which was, uh, I think, Papyrus at this time, uh, a few years ago, as a proof of concept. So we know that from Capella towards CSML, it is uh, absolutely feasible. But we have no current available uh, uh, gateway uh, in order to support that. And, and this may be, may be uh, considered later. Um, we have some work uh, for so you need to be able to do that on, on both directions. But uh, you have to know that it's probably more complex from CISML towards uh, Capella, just because we have some uh, well formed rules in terms of modeling, and, and we lack some concepts uh, in CISML that we have in Capella, and vice versa. So it's not the, if a CISML model is not formed conformably with uh, Arcadia, we might not be able to fully uh, 
the degraded inside camera. And some units do part of the testing. Okay, thanks, thanks John. Um, well, I will. I will speak just one last question, and after that, I will free you. And uh, is, this is Andrew asking if we have any stats about the Capella days, and maybe it's another argument to demonstrate the perennity of Capella. Uh, so yes, we have few stats. Um, we had uh, 860 registered attendees and uh, something like an average of uh, 220 uh, people for each, uh, for each session, something like that. And in terms of location, well, we, we don't have studies that in detail, but clearly we have a worldwide uh, representation. So clearly, uh, uh, we, we, we met our expectation. And it's really interesting to see we have more and more people interested by Capella and more and more signs of uh, uh, advanced usage of, uh, of Capella. Okay, so thanks, gentlemen, for having with us to having here with us today. Um, well, I will unfortunately have to to close this uh, this session and conclude the Capella days. Great. Thanks again. Have a good thank day. you. Thank you very much for the organization. Yes, thanks a lot for that.